Hey, my name is Phil, and I'm going to be changing the front brake system on my car. All right, before we raise the car, we're going to take the lug nuts off with 13 sixteenths. Uh, it just makes it easier for us to take the wheels off when it's raised. Uh, right now I'm just putting the jack stands under to make sure the uh, car doesn't fall over. Alright, now we lower it. Alright, just for uh, safety precautions, extra safety, number one priority. Set your tires underneath, and that's just a double double safety for if the jack stands fail since it's gravel. All right, to remove the caliper, we need a ratchet and a 17 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. So these two bolts here on the top and on the bottom are going to be a 14 millimeter, and then these two holding the whole caliper itself are going to be 17 mm. Right, so I'm going to take the top part off and I'm going to open it kind of like a clam to take out the brake pads. All right, so I'm just going to take it out, last bolt, and there you go. Take out these brake pads. Fairly good. Might reuse them. Yeah. As you can tell, this one's a little warped. Uh, more wear on one side than the other. Now we're gonna zip tie this caliper up to the upper control arm. Just so we don't damage this wire right here. Sometimes when bolts are uh, a little stubborn, I use PB Blaster, which is kind of like a WD-40, but a lot stronger. And now we just give it some time to uh, let the fluid penetrate the bolt. Uh, to get more leverage, I'm gonna start my car and turn the wheel the opposite way so that I can have more access. All right. This is a good old friend. It's better than a brake bar because it's longer. Oh. There you go. Now we're loosening the last bolt that's holding this caliper bracket in. I'll be able to take it out. So, and these bolts were in there, right here and right here. And usually with a lot of the older cars, you're gonna have to hit this with a hammer or kick it. But in my case, they're pretty brand new. I'm just replacing them again because they got warped. So you just squiggle them off. That's it. All right, so uh, brand new brakes, they come with a uh, oil coating to prevent it from rusting. I'm just gonna clean that off right now. That's what comes off from these bad boys. Okay. All right, to uh, help the caliper go on a little bit easier, we're gonna put on two lug nuts just to keep the rotor in place. So this is the ceremony of connecting the caliper with the brake. Uh, it's gonna get a little dirty because we also have to bleed the brakes uh, to get the air out of them and get a, uh, just nice fluid in there, brake fluid. That's all you need. Same thing on the other one. That's it. Right, now we're just gonna redo our steps. We're gonna plop it back in and then we're gonna undo these bolts after we bolt it on. Now we just gotta tighten it down. Just nice and snug. So we just finished up tightening up the bracket 
onto the frame of this uh, knuckle. Uh, now we're just gonna unscrew one of them. We're gonna open it up like a clam. Throw in two brake pads. Make sure uh, when we put the brake pads in, uh, we're gonna put some uh, brake lubricant right here, right here, right here, and on the back side as well, on both sides. We're just gonna slide it in. All right, so now we're gonna open up the caliper like a clamp. And we gotta put these clamps in. All right, pretty self-explanatory. All right, so uh, how we know which brakes are which? You know, one of these brakes has this uh, squeak function, so once the brake gets to this point, it's gonna scrape against this metal and it's gonna make a squeaking sound. You'll need one per rotor, so one has it, one doesn't. This one usually goes in the front, right here, and the one that squeaks usually goes in the back, like so. Okay, so the last thing for the brake pads, uh, this kind of keeps them separated and also keeps them from ra rattling around. But you put them in and you keep the brakes depressed. You put on the second one. Because if you don't, they're just gonna pop right out. After we put the springs in, we close the caliper over the brake pads. All right, so uh, this is uh, my little contraption I made to make it easier to bleed the brakes, the brand new brakes. Uh, it's basically a quarter inch hole I drilled into the top of this bottle and a small little breather hole as well so it lets air out. And basically how it works is you would connect it to the brakes and uh, you just let the brake fluid go through and wait till there's no bubbles. And all the bubbles go through here and through this little hole so you have a basically a air-free brake system. I'm gonna take this out, try to deal it. I'm gonna remount that one. These bolts, which is gonna be a lot easier. I'll just explain it. I put this one on. Like so, because it's the same thing, just a bit older. I'm gonna screw it on to a tree deal, like, not like crazy a lot. All right, so now we're gonna take out the banjo bolt. And the banjo bolt is basically a bolt, but on the inside it's got a hole, and then it's got a breather hole. I'll show you when I take it out. Okay, and uh, this is the banjo bolt. As you can see, there's a hole in the middle, and then a breather hole on the side. Just lets the brake fluid flow through the bolt. Uh, easily. Uh, now we're securing it back on. We grab this, take out the old one, and these copper washers. One goes on top, one goes on bottom. And you would just connect it. Okay, now we put in the brake pads. Slide this caliper on. There we go. Just secure this right here. All right, we're gonna wipe it down. We're gonna grab some of our brake cleaner, because, uh, Thing about brake fluid is that it corrodes any type of rubber, so we gotta make sure we clean it off real good. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna bleed the brake. So I'm gonna connect it here on this bleed valve. All right, all you gotta do now is loosen this bleed valve with a, I got an eight millimeter wrench. 
we're just going to slowly unloosen it. It's going to take a little while for the brake fluid to kind of come out. Uh, now we're going to press the brakes. After we push the brakes, the fluid's supposed to come out of that tube, uh, and we're just supposed to wait till the air comes out, so the little bubbles. Uh, once there's no air coming out, which we still got air coming out, as you can see, we're just gonna let it aerate and uh, bleed until it's fully no bubbles. Then uh, we're gonna refill, refill the brake fluid. After a couple of minutes, the bubbles should start clearing up and uh, you should be good to go. All right, now we're gonna tighten it since there's no bubbles and uh, it's clear. We're gonna put the wheel on. Okay, we're taking it off and uh, there we go. The last step is to spray with some brake cleaner. Wipe it down and we'll put the, the wheel on. What I'm going to do instead of lowering the car, since I still got another side to do, turn the car on and just press the brakes. Uh, so this job took about an hour. Uh, I bought all the parts myself, about $400 for both front uh, rotors, front brake pads, and front calipers. And uh, to, to, to do it at a shop, it's about $1,400, so I just pocketed about $1,000. Uh, go out there and do it yourself.